Ew. This is sticky. Yeah, this is kind of nasty, but it's necessary. Now, last episode, last episode on the Praxis 55712 channel, I mentioned that I have a fungus gnat invasion. And uh, it's going really well, by the way. Uh, uh, most of the fungus gnats are dead. And uh, when I check the soil, I find no maggots at all. So I haven't found any maggots and my uh, predatory mites are chowing down and having a good old time. But I do still see a couple adults buzzing around here. And uh, I got to show you something that they actually did as a favor to me. Yes, the fungus gnats probably as a peace offering so I don't slaughter them all. They did a little uh, good thing for me. I want to show you what that is. But for right now, I'm showing you these yellow pieces of paper because this is actually a really neat tool. Uh, what I have is I have predatory mites in my soil. What they do is they wa uh, walk around and kill off fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are those little tiny gnats that you see buzzing around your soil. They lay eggs and then they're babies, each root. Yeah, I've gone on and on about that. So I won't go on about this again. If you want to hear about fungus gnats, go to the Praxis channel and uh, Praxis 55712 channel and look at my last episode. I'll tell you all about fungus gnats. But what I want to show you is this. This is something I got from a website called Park Seeds. And Park Seeds is a good website. And uh, these, I got like 25 or 30 of these for like three something. Yeah, plus some shipping. And that's a good price. What I do is I just cut them in half and then I take them and I put them on a little stick and I shove them into the soil. Now, once you peel off the back of this, let me show you what this is. Yeah, they make it a little pointy here. And this is the yellow side, really nice looking yellow. And then on the back is the peel off part so that you don't stick your hands to this, okay? Back here, this is very, very sticky and it's like fly paper. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to peel off the back, jam this into the soil with our little pointy piece of cardboard here. And what happens is the fungus gnats are attracted to yellow. That's their favorite color. They love yellow because it reminds them of a flower. And then they come up and they go, hey, flower stick. Yeah, and it's like flypaper. And so you'll have fungus gnats stuck all over this stuff. And it's very, very useful in catching the adults. What I do is I just slice them right up the middle because you don't need a huge thing in a small pot. So you can cut these into smaller pieces if you want. What I'm doing is I'm slicing them directly across, cutting off this triangle because the triangle has no sticky on it. And then what I end up with is these. It looks like a little picket sign. Yep. I just got some chopsticks and uh, what I did was I cut them in half, taped it onto the back where there is no sticky part, and I just jam it into the soil. Yep. And what that does is you don't want it to touch the soil. You want it just above the soil and it attracts the fungus gnats and they land on it and they can never escape. Yep, it's like a black hole. And so I got about maybe a dozen fungus gnats stuck all over these little uh, picket signs all over the grow room. And it's really kind of disgusting. It's a horrible way to die. But then again, they're a horrible little creature. So I really don't care. So um, I'm getting rid of all of these in here. And that way, my grow room is going to grow a little bit better. Take that tip if you want. Get yourself some yellow sticky traps. It's really wonderful whether you use predatory mites or not. These things will slow down. They won't cure your fungus gnat problem, but they will slow it down. And uh, one thing that the, um, the fungus gnats did, and uh, thank you fungus gnats. Yes, thank you very much for helping me out is right here. Come on over here. I want to show you this plant because this is actually pretty cool. I want to show you all of these, but I want to show you this one first, okay? Because this one is doing something that I've never had happen in the voodoo garden ever. So take a look at this. This unimpressive little plant is a zucchini. Yeah, normally grown outside, it's a zucchini, but just for the heck of it. I was getting kind of stir crazy in the voodoo garden this winter. It was a long, creepy winter. So I decided to grow a little bit of outdoor stuff indoors. And this is my first time growing a zucchini indoors. I normally don't grow zucchini and I can grow it really well outside, but I generally don't grow it because I'm not really big on zucchini. You know, I'll eat it if it's there, but I prefer not to actually encourage this stuff to grow in my garden. But um, yeah, it is a fun one to grow, but it's just not a fun one for me to eat. Anyway, uh, this has been growing inside and I've been trimming off the lower leaves as it grows. Yeah, so it's kind of top heavy right now, but let me turn this over. And right over here, take a look at this. Let me zoom in really close. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I got a zucchini here. Yep. And uh, this is the first zucchini on the plant and it's going to survive. Generally what happens is, is that um, uh, the plant will put out male flowers first. That's generally what uh, cucumbers, watermelons, all those vines, what they'll do is they'll put out male flowers first. Let me show you what a male flower looks like. For those of you who have never grown uh, any kind of vine, 
Let me show you up close without killing the plant. Here's a male flower, and the male flower is nothing more than a flower on a stem. See that? It's just a green stem, this big flower right here. That's a male flower. Now a female flower is right next to it. You can see how the stem is fuzzier and fatter. That's a young zucchini underneath there. And what these plants will do, not just zucchini, but uh, watermelons, pumpkins, cucumbers, ooh, let me put the soil up against here so it doesn't fall down. What they'll normally do is they'll put out male flowers first as they grow. Now, I don't have any kind of science behind this, but this is my guess that these plants will put out the male flowers first because they take a lot less energy to put out. All it is is a flower on a stem, whereas the female flowers, that's a whole fruit on a stem. Uh, they call the vegetable the fruit, and that takes a lot more energy to produce for this plant. So what they do is they put out a whole bunch of male flowers first, and what that does is it signals to the pollinating insects, hey, there's flowers over here. Come on over here and start pollinating these, and bees love this. Uh, bees and other insects will come over here and they'll start pollinating the male flowers, which does not produce anything. It feeds the insects, gets them into a routine to coming over to this plant, and then it starts putting out the female flowers. And then what the insects will do is pollinate them, because if they put out the female flowers first, the male flowers may not even be there, and I don't even know if the female flowers can pollinate themselves. So it'd be a huge waste to put out this fruit and then have it die off. That is a lot of stress on your plant. So I actually think that these plants have some kind of weird rudimentary instinct, intelligence, whatever you might want to call it. These plants know what they're doing. They really do know what they're doing. What I did, and this is what I wanted to show you, is I noticed that this fruit wasn't falling off. And I, I also told you that fungus gnats are attracted to yellow. I think fungus gnats got in here and pollinated this. So what I did was, just for the heck of it, I pollinated it even more. I took a male flower and I pollinated it. Let me show you how I did that. I'm gonna take the male flower. Normally I would just get the pollen off of it. I've taken the male flower off and I'm gonna open it up. Do this very gently. You can do this on your outdoor plants if you wanna make sure, like if you have pumpkins or watermelons, you wanna make sure that you're getting some good pollination. Gently, there we go. This little booger right in here, there's all kinds of pollen on that. Now, I'm gonna set this aside and turn it over. All right, now, since the female flower isn't quite open yet, I'm gonna to have to open it up, and this is where my uncoordinated fingers don't really have much of an advantage. I'm just gonna open it up just a little bit. There we go. And now, for those adults that don't wanna show their kids the facts of life, you might wanna close your eyes. The male goes in there and pollinates the female flower. You just bump them around a little bit and the pollen falls off the male and it pollinates the female. Now, if I really want to, I could just leave that part right there. And that way, any kind of pollen that falls off is sure to get in there. And there we have a pollinated female flower. If I did my homework right, what that's gonna do is the grains of pollen are gonna mix in over here and nature's gonna work its magic. And this will stay green and grow larger and larger into a full-size zucchini as time goes on. We'll see how this little project of mine works. Pretty cool though, a zucchini plant indoors that's actually growing zucchini. And if we move in a little bit closer, let me move the plant closer to you because it's easier than moving you. Let me move this around a little bit. And you can see we have another male flower over here ready to go. And this one is hard to tell, but I can tell by the base of it, the fuzziness at the stem. That's actually a female right there. So I have more zucchinis on the way. Just a little example of what's going on here in the voodoo garden for you. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised. And I would really be surprised if this thing doesn't just fall over and snap its stem because it's getting a little top heavy. Normally, uh, zucchini plants, all the ones that I've seen, they grow longer stems, bigger leaves, and their leaves fold down as they grow and it helps support the plant. This one's growing in a 10 inch pot, so I really don't think that it's gonna hold itself up. I may eventually have to put in sticks and prop this thing up. Don't know, I guess I'll play it by ear. This one here you've seen before. This is an apple gourd, and an apple gourd, if, you, if you've never seen an apple gourd, look it up on Google. Go and type in apple gourd, and it's the coolest looking thing. It puts out these little round gourds, and I don't know if they're edible or not. Hey, look at this now. It puts out these uh, little, um, I'm gonna get him with my little picket sign later, but uh, no, I'm gonna get him right now booger. Ha! Sucks to be you. Anyway, yeah, I just murdered something uh, on air. Yep, that's what I do. Um, what this thing does is it puts out these really 
cool looking gourds that look just like a green apple. It's exactly what it looks like. That's why they call it the apple gourd. And I'm growing this indoors uh, just for fun, just for fun. I do all of this just for fun. But I noticed something and I thought it might help you in your outdoor garden. And normally I say my outdoor gardening tips for the Praxis channel, but this is something that's going to be grown in the Voodoo Garden. But uh, it may help you if you're uh, growing gourds, if you're growing, uh, let's see, pumpkins. Pumpkins do the same thing. Pumpkins, gourds, uh, maybe some watermelons, I'm not sure. Let me show you what I'm talking about though, because this is real, um, you know what? I'll tell you what, let's move this guy over so I don't accidentally knock it down because you know I will, I'm very clumsy. Let's put you right back here so nobody gets hurt. And then I'm gonna put this right up here. Now, when you look at this, look at the very base of it, at the very base at the bottom because it's doing something that I've never actually seen except for on water uh, pumpkins. Take a look at this. Right here. Yep, they look like spines, but I believe what these are is, uh, I put some soil up against here, but I believe what these things are is uh, nubs that will form roots if the stem is buried. Now this, this plant is not really that high up to the surface. I buried it deeper when I planted it and it seemed to start growing a lot faster when I did that. And I think it's because on the stem of this, these little nubs where uh, they start putting out these little spines and then when the plant falls over and it hits the ground, they turn into roots. My uh, dragon fruit does that. And I've seen um, pumpkins do this. And uh, so when pumpkins grow along the ground, the more roots they put down, the stronger they get. The stronger they get, the faster they grow. The faster they go, the more roots they put down. And it just, it's this exponential pyramid effect. And that is one of the ways that I'm thinking of growing my pumpkin this year because I got two seeds of a, of a really large pumpkin. And so this is giving me ideas and uh, I'm gonna spread this to you. So hopefully this will help you in your garden. If you're growing uh, any kind of gourd or a pumpkin, bury it a little bit deeper when you plant it, just like the tomatoes, and it will put out roots along its stem. And every one of those is gonna be just that much stronger. And then normally on um, pumpkins, the junction, there's a junction where leaves are, then a stem, then a junction. And wherever those junctions are, generally it will start putting out roots when, when it hits the ground. And I grew sugar pumpkins this way and they grew fantastic. This year I'm gonna do it with a huge uh, pumpkin and I'm gonna do it with these gourds indoors because when I transplant this, I'm gonna put it a little bit deeper and we're gonna see if this grows a little bit faster. Oh yeah, and by the way, don't worry about the table getting water on it. Uh, I've had so many people tell me, Ray, you should put something underneath these plants or put something on the table. This table may look nice, but when you look at it really up close in person, it's got a long crack growing down the top and the bottom's a little bit broken, so I put on brackets. So this is not actually a good table. This is just an old piece of crap that I got at a garage sale and it's barely being held together. So I'm really not too awful concerned about the condition of this thing. But look at this, look at this plant here. Let me zoom in on the bottom because I've shown this with a scorpion and uh, a boot jalokia plant. And I don't know what kind of pepper plant this is, but it was sent to me by a young viewer and his name is David Chup. Yeah, and uh, uh, I call him Little Chup Dude. Uh, he's a gardener and uh, he's really getting into growing things. And he went to the grocery store, he got some peppers and he sent me a couple peppers. They came in the mail all moldy and gross, but I picked out some of the seeds and I planted them. So you can actually grow peppers from seeds, from store-bought peppers, and this is proof that you can do it. But there's a few things going on on this, good and bad, and I wanna show you this because this is something that can help you when you're growing your peppers, and a lot of you enjoy growing peppers, so this will help you. Take a look at this. Now the leaves on this are beautiful. They are just the right size, they are healthy, they're growing fast, but let me show you something underneath the leaves. I'm just gonna pinch one of them off real quick. I'm going to give you a close-up on this. See what's going on underneath this leaf? Yep, it looks like a whole bunch of little light dots, doesn't it? I'm trying to get the best light on it possible. Now, this is not a disease, nor is this an insect infestation. If you have a magnifying glass or a jeweler's loop, you'll look at these. What they're doing is they're growing right along the veins and they look like, it, it, to the naked eye and to the unexperienced, this may look like a whole bunch of insects, like spider mites, and you might freak out. The first time I saw them, that's what I thought it was. But there's nothing going on on the top. Now this is happening to a lot of the leaves and generally you'll see this on younger pepper plants. 
What this is called is pepper leaf edema. And I'm going to write it right along top here so that you can see the words and exactly how it's spelled. Pepper leaf edema. And it's not a game ender. It's not a problem. So if you see this, don't freak out and go running around in circles until you pass out. Ignore it. Okay? What this is, is all those little bumps, if you explode them with a magnifying glass and look at them, what happens is the plant is taking in water at such an insane rate that its leaves, I mean, plants can only grow so fast. You can only make them grow so fast. And this plant is growing as fast as it possibly can. But when they're young, like I said, they're putting down roots and they get this really nice root system, but they don't have a lot on top. What will happen is they're sucking in all this water and I recommend watering them in the morning. I don't recommend watering them right before you turn the lights off because then they start bringing up water and then nighttime's there and they shouldn't be doing that. They should be resting at night. So what happens is these plants take in all this water and then the leaves and uh, the plant can't grow fast enough to use all the water, the moisture and everything coming up into the plant. What happens is the cells on these leaves, they rupture and they form these little nodules and that's just ruptured cells on the leaves. It doesn't hurt the plant at all, but it's kind of like bumps. And I, I like to compare it to a young person getting acne. I mean, they're growing so fast, their body doesn't know what to do, and there's all kinds of funky stuff going on with the kid. Same thing with the pepper plant. They're getting basically pepper leaf acne. And this has nothing to do with the plant. It has nothing to do with what you're doing to it. Ignore it and it will go away. As the plant gets bigger, it's more able to handle the water that its roots and its healthy stem is bringing up and it will eventually go away. So don't worry if your leaves are getting a little bit funky looking and they get all this stuff underneath it. Not a problem at all. Now let's go underneath here because I want to show you what's going on underneath these leaves. Something that you wouldn't expect. This by the way is a young pepper plant and it was really on the verge of death uh, when I was having problems with my fertilizer and I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. I, I was tempted to throw it away but it was a gift from a friend and so I did everything I could. I changed the soil, I shook off the old soil, put it into a red plastic cup, and I grew it, and it just went nuts with the new soil and the fertilizer. So I put it into this pot. This is what's called a greenhouse pot, and it has holes at the bottom, and you're supposed to put it on a tray. I have a tray that I normally keep this in. It's deep to where the roots can go way down, and boy, these roots went nuts when I transplanted this. And I've been pruning this. I pruned it right in the center and it grew some side branches and you can see the side branches. I know there's a lot of leaves in the way, but it's growing some really nice looking side stems and it's going to be a very healthy, very strong, very sturdy plant because look, the fork of the plant is right here. Let me get rid of this garbage. I call it garbage because it doesn't need this. See the fork? Yep. Normally this fork is going to be about six to eight inches above ground. This is at soil level because I pinched it back and I buried it deep. So now I have a very low center of gravity when it comes to this plant and it's going to hold a lot more fruit. Yeah, I know a lot of you are looking at this right here. This is what the fungus nets did. I did not pollinate these and I don't believe they pollinated each other because there's been no shaking around of the plant. This plant has been left alone. This plant is starting to put out peppers. Normally with a young plant, if you're going to be growing this outdoors, I tell you, when you're growing it, it's very tempting to let these peppers grow, but you should take them off because that's a lot of energy diverted from this plant. Pinch off the flowers, pinch off the peppers, and force this plant to actually grow leaves. So I'm going to have to do that, but I noticed this, and I haven't paid attention to this plant for quite a while. Yep, it got pollinated by the fungus nets because this plant was one of the worst that had fungus nets on it, and now I only see like one. Yep. So this one's doing really good. And I'm probably going to grow it indoors. Let me zoom you up real quick. This is a beautiful, healthy plant. It's not the best plant you've ever seen by a long shot, but it's a good, healthy plant grown from seeds from a store-bought pepper. The pepper's unknown. Don't know what it is, and I really don't care. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grow this indoors in this pot, and I'm sure I'm going to have to transplant it probably in a few weeks because these roots are going to head all the way to the bottom that long distance all the way to the bottom. Yes, pepper plant roots will grow fast if they have light, fluffy soil. This is rich enough to keep the plant growing strong. It is the perfect soil as far as I'm concerned. Now, one of the things that I showed you a long time ago in pruning pepper plants, I'm gonna show you again, just really quick, 
because some people don't want to go back to those earlier episodes. The plants that I grew to monster proportions, this is how I prune them. It's one thing that you have to pay attention to. When you want to grow a big plant, you don't want it all clustered together because what happens is leaves will go over other leaves and they'll shade them out and then you'll get these really small leaves that are kind of anemic and then the branches inside will be anemic. Anemic meaning very spindly and very unhealthy looking. So eventually the plant starts getting unhealthy because it's putting all this energy into growing stuff that it can't really grow because it's shaded. These need a lot of light. And just because you have a lot of light here doesn't mean that all your leaves are getting a lot of light. Because if you look in here, there are leaves underneath here that aren't getting any light at all because they're shaded. So my rule is anything that grows towards the center, leaf-wise or stem-wise, has to go. You want to keep it a hollow bowl here and force it to grow out because as it grows out, little things will grow in here and there. So you don't want it to do this when it's young and when it's small. And this may be a little bit of a tough love thing for you and some people don't like this, but you know what? It works. So everything going towards the inside has to go. And what that's going to do is that's going to open up the inside for the sun or the light to get inside and give this a good healthy growth pattern and also some airflow so you'll have a lot less problems with fungus. Whenever you have like a mildew, like um, uh, I don't remember what they're called, um, uh, blight. Blight and uh, like early blight, late blight, you get uh, two different kinds of fungus in, indoors and I forgot what they're called but I've had them before. Whenever you get funguses on leaves, it's generally from the moisture sticking around, the humidity. So what you want to do is you want to remove the lower leaves, you want to remove the inner leaves like this and that gets the airflow going through this plant and where there's airflow there's generally not a lot of fungus issues and it also gets the light in like I said. So while you're growing your plants indoors, prune them. Get all this garbage out of here Toss this out into the garden or into the compost pile or if you got those big grubs like me. Or even if you got a, a worm bin going on. Feed them to your worms. They love pepper leaves. And um, there. That's just a quick pruning. And I do this as it grows. And as it grows, it'll get bigger, stronger. And these stems right here are going to be its main support stems all the way around. So it's going to be a nice, even growth. There's a little tip for you for growing your plants. Whether it's indoors or getting them ready for outdoors. I start mine early. And I know it seems a little bit early to be growing pepper plants already for outdoors, but by the time, if this were one that goes outside, by the time this went outside, it's going to be quite the specimen, right? So I planted it in the garden and voila, I already got instant peppers and flowers getting ready to come out. I got one heck of a start on my season. One of my most popular programs is how to grow a mango indoors. And that was a fun episode. I got to eat the mango and I got to grow the seed. And that mango did really well, but then spider mites came in and they just float on the air and they got a hold of it and I worked every trick I knew, but it still died from the spider mite invasion of 2011, I believe. It was pretty nasty. But sometimes when you're growing a mango, you're going to get stuff like this on the leaves. I really don't know what that is. And it really doesn't bother me because what happens is as the mango grows, the bottom leaves are either going to die or you take them off because you want this to grow similar to a palm tree. You want to have a nice sturdy trunk and a display of leaves at the top so you can just snip this off. When you get a leaf that looks like that, you can worry about what it is or you can just go, you know what, not my problem. There. I know that sounds a little simplistic but that's what I do. I take the leaves as it grows and I take the bottom ones off and this causes this to be more of a woody solid stem and not so much weight on the top. And without leaves that are half, half baked looking at the bottom for it to support, it can put more energy into the better looking stuff at the top and it does help it grow. And the exact same principle that we use to grow the mango goes for growing avocados. And when I sprouted this avocado, I, I normally put them in the soil and I grow it. This one I put into water, you know, the old fashioned way of putting toothpicks in it and then putting in a cup of water. You, you bury it about maybe three quarters of the way in the water and then you put it in a non sunny location and you wait and you wait. And just when you think that this thing is never going to grow, one day you wake up and you go over and it's split open. And you get really happy, but nothing happens after that. It just sits there for another month. And you're like, well, what's going to happen? And then right before you throw it out, you notice one day you go over there and there's a root coming out of the bottom of it. That's the first thing it'll do. It'll split open, it'll sit there for a long time, and then a root will go out towards the bottom. Once that root starts going out of the, the seed, you want to put this in soil and you bury it to where just the tip is above the soil. You don't want to bury it all the way underneath the soil. It'll split open, 
shoot a root down there really fast. Boy, once that root starts going, you can't stop it. And that root will go down and start drawing up nutrients, feed this plant, because it takes a lot of energy. And then it'll send up this stem and some leaves. Sometimes you'll get these big, huge leaves, like on a mango. Sometimes you won't. With avocados, it's a luck of the draw. I've gotten uh, avocados that had huge leaves. This one doesn't have huge leaves, but one thing you will notice, a very solid stem on it. And the trick to getting a very solid stem and not a tall, anemic looking worm of a plant is to give them plenty of lights. I have those uh, really strong light bulbs. And let me show you really quick what they look like. These are the kind of bulbs I use. And this is a 500 watt equivalent, and I believe it's a 105 watt compact fluorescent, 500 watt incandescent equivalent, okay? That's what this is, and it costs me about 25 bucks or something like that per bulb. I put these in the ceiling, they're pointed down, and this plant is kept about maybe, I don't know, eight inches to a foot below the light bulb, and that is the perfect amount of light. If you have a sunny window, oops, I'm reaching up here, putting this back in. If you have a sunny window, you want to put this by a sunny window, they will love it, but don't put it right by the sunny window because the heat right up against the sunny window can bake any plant. You want to keep it back a foot to two feet from that window and it will love you and it will grow perfectly. So if you don't have lights in your house, the sunniest window, eastern window is the best because that's the coolest sunlight that you can possibly get. Plants love eastern windows. But anyway, this is my avocado and take a look. Take a look at this. See my little picket sign? See the dead little boogers over here? Yep, they tried to attack my plant. Not gonna happen. I love pruning these plants. It's just more food for my uh, grubs and more food for my grubs means more uh, worm castings and the more worm castings I get, the more those little predatory mites are growing inside those worm castings. So I'm actually doing a whole lot of stuff. I'm keeping the plants healthy. I'm feeding my grubs. My grubs are making the castings. The castings are feeding the predatory mites to get them going. Predatory mites are keeping my garden ha happy. It's that that cycle of life and the, the symbiotic relationship I got going on here that really makes me happy and it keeps my plants happy too. But next week, Next week on uh, Praxis 55712 channel, I have a tip for you. You know, when you plant seeds in a little tiny container, sometimes you put in a whole bunch of seeds because you want to make sure you get one to, that germinates. And then just your luck, they all germinate. So you get all these seeds coming up in this cup and you're like, ah, what are we going to do? So um, I have a tip for you on how to get those seedlings out without damage, uh, damaging them whatsoever every single time. And you can save every single one of those seedlings and put them into separate containers. I'm going to show you how I do it and hopefully this will help you do it. And also I'm going to do that little tip and I'm also going to take you outside because there's something I want to ask you about uh, future plans that I have. And those of you that have actually have outdoor animals such as goats, chickens, anything that's outdoors, hopefully that you can help me with this question that I have because it really is important. I'm not just asking you a question to hear myself talk. I'm asking you a question because I'm getting ready to do something outside and I like to get your feedback on this. So tune in to the Practice 5572 channel and hopefully you can help me uh, because um, I really do need some help. I'm kind of winging it when it comes to what I'm going to be doing out there and I'll tell you about that in the next episode. But for right now, this is Ray and Rascal. Yes, Rascal is in here somewhere. I think he's, oh, he's sleeping right down there. This is Ray and Rascal in the Voodoo Garden. We're out of here. What's in here? Yeah, you like those, huh? Rascal loves coming in here and looking at the grubs. I, I don't know why he gets a kick out of it, but he will stand up here on this tub and he will stare at these things. I know you guys don't want to see this, but I really don't care. This is where I'm growing my grubs. Yep, that tub that I showed you. And it's nothing but plant stuff. You know, when I chop my plants up, I throw it in here. I got uh, used coffee grounds and sawdust, like that big bag of, of wood chips that I have. This is what it turns into. And if I were to take that jeweler's loop, that magnifier, and show you up close, this thing is teeming with endless amounts of those predatory mites because uh, they like it in here. And the uh, fungus gnats don't bother this at all. And uh, they don't hurt the, the grubs. The grubs don't hurt the predatory mites. Everybody lives in harmony in here. And as soon as this stuff breaks down enough, I'm going to be sprinkling this all over my indoor plants. But for right now, it's just entertainment for the little crackhead. <laughs> Say goodbye, rascal.